In this chapter, we'll talk about digital circuits and digital design. Before we talk about how to build the circuits, we'll introduce how to manage complexity or the art of managing complexity, because many of these circuits are, are very complex. And we'll talk about number systems, binary numbers, hexadecimal numbers, um, and how to manipulate these numbers, for example, adding these numbers. And then logic gates and logic levels, how we build logic gates from transistors, and finally, how much power these gates consume. Many digital circuits are too big to fit in one person's head at once. So how do we manage this type of complexity? Well, we can use methods, particularly abstraction, discipline, and what we call the three Ys because they all end in the letter Y, hierarchy, modularity, and regularity. So abstraction is hiding details when they're not important. So here is a um, kind of golden thread of abstraction for, for digital design and computer architecture. At the very bottom of this abstraction level um, or of these abstraction layers is physics. So the electrons um, that these devices are built from. And then we have the devices like transistors and diodes. We'll talk about transistors in this class. Um, and then we can build circuits from those transistors and diodes, analog circuits and digital circuits, AND gates, NOT gates, et cetera. And then from those gates, we can build devices or logic units, such as adders and memories. And then we can put those units together to build a processor, what's called, what's called the microarchitecture. And above that is the architecture, how we access this um, or program this processor using instructions and register de designations. And then above that is the operating system, and finally, um, the application software. So the software that we write to run on the processors. And so we always want to be kind of dealing at the highest level of abstraction that we can, because then we can hide details that aren't important and think about the, the important issues of design at the level, at the highest level possible. So if we're designing a, a circuit with gates and gates and not gates, we'll talk about in this class, I'm not thinking about the electrons that are running around in the, in the gate making it work. Sometimes we'll pop down a level of abstraction to think about the implications, but typically when you're working at a level of abstraction, for example, digital circuits, you'll mostly be thinking about the levels above and below that level of abstraction, just keeping that in mind. But again, Abstraction is to hide details when, there aren't, they, when they aren't important. Discipline is intentionally restricting design choices. So the, the example for this class especially is digital discipline. Typically, um, any, any signal has a continuous range of values, for example, voltages, but we'll restrict ourselves to a subset of those voltages in digital design. And this makes it simpler to design. So this is why um, many analog kind of devices like the camera, um, recording devices, music devices for, for playing and recording music have become digital and replaced their analog predecessors because we can build more complex systems that can do more stuff because we're dealing at a higher level of abstraction instead of worrying about, oh, is it 1.1 volt? I'm just worrying about, hey, is it, is, it a, is it approximately three volts? Great. And so the, the last kind of way that we're gonna deal with, um, with complexity is using the principles of the three Ys. Hierarchy, remember Y is the last letter, hierarchy, modularity, and regularity. So hierarchy is having modules, submodules, sub-submodules, Right? So we may have, a, for example, a university and it has colleges within that and within those colleges are departments and within those departments are classes. So we have these kind of this higher level view, the university and then um, sub modules and even sub sub modules. And so it's breaking or dividing the system into modules and sub modules. What is a module? Well, a module has a well-defined function. So what it does and a well-defined interface 
or how do we interact with it, right? So for your car, for example, the interface is the steering wheel. That helps, that's how you interface it. That, that's what you, what you use to turn it in certain directions, etc. And the last one is regularity. Regularity is encouraging uniformity. So modules can be easily reused. When I go to buy a tire for my car, um, they don't have to make it from scratch and measure the dimensions of, of the hub and et cetera. Um, it's, it has a regular interface that, that uh, at least you know, most tires have the same, the same interface or you know, a small number of interfaces. So an example of all of these principles is uh, shown in the Model T Ford, which was a famous early example, 1908, of, of interchangeable parts. Most previous car, uh, cars were handcrafted, and so they took you know, a lot of time to build, and um, when something broke, you'd have to go back to those same people and they would fix it. But, but this mass production on a moving assembly line caught, uh, made costs go down by a lot and made it a lot more accessible to, uh, to more people as, as sh shown in the kind of vision of Henry Ford, the, the creator of the, um, of the Model T Ford, um, where he wanted it to be available to, to, to many people so they could enjoy um, you know, driving out into open spaces, as he said. So here's the Model T Ford. It has chassis, wheels, seat engine. Within that, you know, the sub -mod this module here, the sub module of the engine it itself has other sub modules, cylinder, spark plug, exhaust, carburetor. And then, you know, these sub modules have their own sub modules air intake, the carburetor has the air intake, inlet needle, feed pipe, coupling nut, etc. And so modularity, here's an example of how um, this Model T Ford shows modularity. The coupling nut, we can look at just one part. Um, the function is to hold the fuel line to intake to the intake elbow, prevent leaks, be easily removable. And the interface is, well, it's a standardized diameter, has a standard thread pitch and torque, so that if that um, you know if if that breaks, go get another one. And that was made, you know, the specs were the specifications were already known, so you can easily get that you know off the shelf. Regularity, these in interchangeable parts, um, the standard that can be purchased from from many manufacturers. And then uh, and a quote from Henry Ford about regularity in car color: Any customer can have a car painted any color they want as long as it's black. So the digital abstraction is, as we started talking about a few slides ago, well, many physical variables are actually continuous, like voltage on a wire, temperature, frequency of an oscillation, position, like location, right? You don't go from, you know, mile one to mile two. It's a continuous, you know, location or distance, for example. Um, but in digital abstraction, we're going to consider just a discrete subset of these values. And this digital principle was used, uh, you know, um, even, you know, hundreds of years ago. And one of the first instances of using kind of digital principles was Charles Babbage's analytical engine. And he built this for, you know, many years, 1834 to 1871, and it's considered to be the first digital computer. It was built from mechanical gears, not, not electrical, but in mechanical gears, and it re represented discrete values, um, zero to nine. Unfortunately, he died before finishing it, but it was still considered the first digital computer. So our, in a digital discipline, we consider two values, binary values. So binary, this binary means two, so instead of decimal values, right, base 10 values that we're used to dealing with, binary values have two possible values, zero and one. And so a binary value can be called one. We can also call that true or high. Those terms are interchangeable. And a zero can also be referred to as false or low. Those terms are interchangeable. One and zero are voltage levels. They could be ro rotating gears, fluid levels, et cetera. We can represent these kind of on or off, one being on, zero being off, as you know, many different kind of physical representations. 
what we actually use in digital circuits is voltage levels. And so zero is low, what we also call ground or GND, and a one is a high, or we also call this VDD. And that high voltage can be, you know, it varies depending on the circuit. It could be 3.3 volts, it could be five volts, depends on what circuit you're using. And it's important to know what that high voltage is. But so we'll refer to that one as, um, you know, again, one true high or even VDD. And each binary digit is a bit. So that's where the word bit comes from, from binary digit 